Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make a little woven hinged box. Depending on your skill level, I'd say this is an intermediate to advanced design, but with practice it gets pretty easy. If you'd like to see my start to finish process, stay tuned. Okay, so I'm using some of these bronze colored steampunk gears and I want two gears that are the same size. And I picked this one with a hole in the center for a specific reason and you'll see why in a bit. This one is gonna be my top, my lid, and this one will be the bottom. So we'll start with making the bottom, the box itself. Using 20 gauge round dead soft copper wire, and this piece is about 19 inches long. And I'm gonna start by making a loop at one end with my baling pliers. I'm gonna use 28 gauge round weaving wire to weave the box. So I'll get this attached to my loop with a few coils. And this piece of wire is around four feet long. Okay, once I've got that coiled, I can start attaching it to my gear. And some of these gears have a front and a back, so I just want to make sure I've got this front part with a little extra detail facing outwards. So I'll just start basically sewing this 20 gauge base wire onto the gear. I'm gonna go ahead and apologize in advance for my camera struggling to adjust its auto exposure. I'm not sure why it was having so many issues on this one. And this is a really long piece of weaving wire, so I'm gonna be pulling it through slowly and carefully to avoid getting too many kinks in it. And for my weave, I'm going to skip every other prong on the gear. This process is pretty self-explanatory once you get it going, so I'm gonna edit out some of the footage of me pulling the wire all the way through the gear.
hard time from thinking about you. Day and day, but we just thinking about you, Lord. Okay, once I have that first rotation woven together, I'm gonna start my second layer, and I'm just gonna be weaving in between every other prong of the gear again. And I'm trying not to pull this too tightly around my wires because I want to make sure I have enough space in between them to continue getting my 28 gauge wire between them as I move on to weave the third layer. Okay, once I have that second layer done, I'll start on my third layer, and I'm only going to weave the third layer to the second layer, not all the way down to the gear. And there's not quite enough room to get my wire through, so I'm going to pry them apart gently, just a little bit with this dental tool.
All right, I'm gonna finish a few more layers off camera and then I'll show you my progress. Okay, so I've got six layers here and this is what it's looking like. And as you can see, it's just the same pattern, however many layers you wanna do. Just weave the next layer to the last layer. Okay, I've added two more layers, so eight total. And now I wanna make a little bend in the wire that will be one half of the little clasping mechanism of the box. Now I can finish weaving this top layer. And I'm gonna stop weaving right here and make my lid before I finish this with the hinge. Okay, I'm gonna start by securing a little loop into the center of my gear, and that's gonna be where I'll attach a jump ring to hang the box on our necklace chain. I'm using a piece of 20 gauge round wire and it's around three inches long.
Now I'll side this in and finish with a loop. All right, now we can weave our lid. I'm still using 20 gauge round wire and this piece is around 12 inches long. And I'll start it the same way I started the other piece. I'll also just be weaving my little spiral from my bale to the gear so that it's also an extra snug. And I'll be leaving this tail a little long to use for that spiral. Okay, I'm going to weave this together exactly like I did with the first piece, except I'm only going to weave four layers, and halfway through the fourth layer, I'll make the other half of the clasping me mechanism that will keep the box closed, and I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead to that. Now I'll just finish weaving the other half of this fourth layer. Now I'll finish shaping this part of the clasp.
and I'm going to grab the bottom piece and use it to make sure I have this shaped properly so it smoothly fits into the bottom of the clasping mechanism. And right off I can see this top is still slightly too wide so I'll gently squeeze it a little bit more with my pliers. There we go. So now I can move to the back and make the hinge and I'll just check and make sure these two wires aren't going to overlap. Now I can finish tying the weaving wire to the base wire and get that snipped off and tucked in. Okay, now I'll shape the coils to make the hinge, and I like to use my little crank piece from my coiling gizmo for this. I think it's around 20 gauge. You can use your bailing pliers for this or even another piece of wire. Uh, just be prepared to fight with a little bit. This part can be awkward. And I just need to get two coils on each piece to make the hinge, and I want the coils going in this direction so they'll fit together when I attach the lid.
now I'll finish the hinge with a piece of 20 gauge round wire and I'm going to flatten and smooth one end. And then I'll insert that into my coils and do the same thing to the other end. And I decided I didn't like that this was a little loose, so I gently bent those flattened ends just to be extra certain that the wire won't ever slip out. I'm sorry I didn't get that on camera, but hopefully you can see what I've done here. Now I can attach my jump ring. And then I'll oxidize and polish. Alright, here's our finished box and you can put whatever you want in here. You can write little prayers and fold them up and make it a prayer box. You can put small trinkets in it. I like to use them for essential oil diffusing and so for that I have a little lava bead and I just put it on a little scrap piece of wire. And I have a little roller bottle with my essential oils in it. If you don't have a roller bottle, you can use a Q-tip. And I like to get a few drops on there and just lightly dab off the excess so it doesn't stain my shirt when I put the necklace on. Most of it should just absorb right into the lava bead. And then I just drop it in and that will hold the scent of the oils for a few days. So that's how I like to use mine. And I'll show you a couple of variations I've done on this design. This one I just did the hinge wire differently. I bent the ends down around the coils instead of flattening and smoothing them out first.
And this was the first one that I ever made, and I actually put two gears on the lid and added a little accent bead. And as you can see, I put my jump ring on the back of the lid instead of through the top. So to do that, you just want to create that little loop on your first layer of wire as you start that lid. And then I also did the hinge wire differently on this one. I finished both ends with little loops and bent them around the coils. So those are some slight variations, and of course you can find your own ways to customize this design. All right guys, thanks so much for joining me today. I really hope you enjoyed this project. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you'd like to help me make more of these tutorials, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe and tap the bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you follow me on Instagram or TikTok, feel free to share pictures or videos of your creations with me. I love to see what my tutorials inspire. And if you don't follow me on those platforms, make sure you do so because I post lots of fun content on TikTok and IG that you won't see here on my YouTube channel. And I just wanna end by saying have a fantastic day and remember to love your neighbor as yourself and in all things treat others as you want to be treated for this is the law and the prophets. God bless you guys and I hope to see you in the next video.